We now move on to section 3.4 where we're going to look at oxidising and reducing agents. So let's start by looking at redox reactions. Redox reactions involve both a reduction and an oxidation reaction. For example, here we see iron 2 plus ions losing the electron to turn into iron 3 plus ions. So they're losing electrons, the Fe2 plus is losing the electron, so this is an oxidation reaction. And the bromine is gaining two electrons to turn into bromide ions. So because the bromine is gaining electrons, that's a reduction reaction. So if we were to write the balanced redox equation for this reaction, remember what you have to do is make sure no electrons should appear in the balanced redox reaction. The electrons appear in the ion electron equations, but when you produce the balanced redox equation, the electrons should cancel out. So I've got one electron on the right hand side there and two electrons on the left hand side there. So I need to multiply the top equation by 2 in order that when we combine the two, the two electrons there and the two electrons there cancel out. So we're left with our balanced redox equation of 2Fe2 plus plus Br2 goes to 2Fe. 3 plus plus 2 Br minus. So that's our redox equation. Now, what you're going to have to do with redox equations now is be able to identify oxidizing and reducing agents. Now, the Fe2 plus underwent oxidation, it lost electrons. And those electrons it lost caused the bromine to be reduced. So the thing that is oxidized is the reducing agent. So the Fe2 plus in this case is the reducing agent. And the bromine, the Br2, is the oxidizing agent because its presence allowed well, by it being there to accept electrons, it allowed Fe2 plus to lose electrons. So the thing that gets oxidised is the reducing agent, and the thing that gets reduced is the oxidising agent. Now, one important example of redox reactions are displacement reactions. So let's give you an example of a displacement reaction. If you add copper metal to a solution containing silver ions, a displacement reaction will take place. So this is an extract from the electrochemical series from your data booklet. So copper metal, that's Cu solid. And we've got silver ions, which is the Ag plus aqueous. So what happens in this redox equation is that the copper loses electrons to form Cu2 plus. So the oxidation reaction is written as a reverse of what's in the data booklet. These electrons then fall down the electrochemical series and the silver ions pick up the electrons to turn into silver. So This is the oxidation reaction, this is the reduction reaction. And again, to balance it, we need to multiply this one by 2. Electrons cancel out, and we get Cu plus 2 Ag plus goes to Cu2 plus plus 2 Ag. Okay. The copper's been oxidised. So it's the reducing agent. The silver ions are being reduced, so they are the oxid oxidizing agent. OK, 
Okay, so notice we get this in these successful redox reactions. We start off sort of higher up on the right hand side. That substance loses electrons, the electrons go down the way, and something lower down the left hand side picks up those electrons. So let's look at the opposite reaction adding silver metal to a solution containing copper ions. So there's uh, our silver metal. Remember it's not silver ions this time, it's silver metal, so it's AGS. And our copper ions, copper 2 plus ions, they actually appear in two places. So the thing on the right hand side is oxidised, it loses electrons. But the thing is, the electrons cannot go up the way to make this happen. The electrons only allow it to go down the way. A bit like when we were using two metals to produce electricity, the electrons always flowed from the higher metal to the lower metal. The electrons have to go down the way. So you have to kind of go the C shape. So this won't happen, this won't be a reaction because the electrons are not allowed to go up the way. So yeah, in general for these displacement reactions, indeed for all redox reactions, you have to start on the right hand side. Something gets oxidised, the electrons go down, and then something there is reduced. Okay. So. so the oxidation reaction must be higher in the electrochemical series for the reduction reaction, otherwise the reaction will not take place. Okay, with this in mind, we can use the electrochemical series to help us identify the strong oxidising agents and the strong reducing agents. Take lithium, for example, lithium metal. Right, so that's the very highest one in the electrochemical series on the right hand side. So that gets oxidised. The electrons can then go down to any of these things. So it will cause all these things to be reduced. So lithium is an incredibly powerful, very, very strong reducing agent. It will be oxidised and it can cause all these things to be reduced. So in general, <coughs> things in the top right of the electrochemical series are strong reducing agents. And you'll find the strong oxidising agents down in the bottom left. If we go right to the bottom, we've got fluorine gas. The fluorine gas will be reduced by anything above it on the right hand side, from there upwards. So it will cause all these things to be oxidised. So it's an incredibly strong oxidising agent. And so again, in general, things in the bottom left there are strong oxidising agents. So if you want to compare the strength of oxidising agents or compare the strength of reducing agents, find whereabouts they are in the electrochemical series. Higher up on the right hand side, the better it is as a reducing agent, the lower it is on the left hand side and the stronger oxidising agent. There are a couple of strong oxidising reducing agents which you should know about which don't appear in your version of the electrochemical series and they are carbon monoxide is a really strong reducing agent you may remember we use it to <coughs> reduce metals from the ores you don't know exactly where about it fits in here that's not necessary just be aware that carbon monoxide is a really strong reducing agent and a strong oxidizing agent which isn't in the electrochemical series this version of the electrochemical series is hydrogen peroxide H2O2 you're also expected to know a couple of uses of strong oxidizing agents and the ones that we've already commented on in the notes are 
strong oxidised agents are very good at killing fungi and bacteria and permanganate which appears here is often used in fish tanks to help kill bacteria uh, and hydrogen peroxide itself is a strong oxidising agent used for things like bleaching Most of the ion electron equations you're going to have to use are given in the electrochemical series but sometimes you have to construct an ion electron equation that's not given in the electrochemical series. For example you might be asked to write the ion electron equation for the reduction of nitrate ions to nitrogen monoxide. So there's five stages, five steps which allows you quite easily generate these equations. First step, write the formula for the reactant and the product. So nitrate is NO3 minus, and it's getting changed to nitrogen monoxide, so that's NO. Second step, balance the equation, ignoring oxygens and hydrogens. Okay, so Usually there's just one thing that's not oxygen or hydrogen. In this case it's nitrogen. One atom, one atom. So it's already balanced, so we don't need to do anything there. So it's still NO3 minus goes to NO. Third step, we now balance the oxygens. And you do that by adding water to whichever side is short of oxygens. So <coughs> <coughs> three oxygens here, only one here. So we need to add water to this side. And, no. and we need two lots of water to get us up to three oxygen atoms. We then balance the hydrogens by adding H plus ions to whichever side is short. Got four hydrogens over this side, so we're going to need to add four hydrogens to the side. So NO3 minus plus 4H plus goes to NO plus 2H2O. And the last step is you balance the charges by adding electrons to whichever side and the electrons added to it. Can I just stress at this stage? Is not a requirement for both sides to be neutral as long as both sides have got the same overall charge. It could be both sides being one minus, both sides being four plus. Uh, so it's just getting the charges balanced, not necessarily neutral. So at the moment on the left hand side we've got NO3 one minus and four H pluses. So we've got an overall charge of three plus. On the right hand side it's neutral. So to balance it, if we add three electrons to this side, both sides, in this case, will be neutral. So, our final balanced equation would be NO3 minus plus 4H plus plus three electrons goes to NO plus 2H2O. So, if you follow those five steps, you should be able to construct ion electron equations given the reactant and the product. And finally, we, you'd be expected to be able to do calculations based on redox titrations. So, for example, 50 cubic centimetres of Fe2 plus reacts with 20 cubic centimetres of dichroate solution. Find the concentration of the Fe2 plus and you're given the balanced equation. So the two things we're interested in are Fe2 plus and the dichromate the Cr2 O72 minus and they are in a ratio of 1 to 5. Okay. We know the volume of Fe2 plus, so we know V reacts to 20 cubic centimetres of dichromate, so we know the volume of the dichromate. And we also know the concentration of the dichromate. So we can work out the number of moles of the dichromate. So the number of moles of the dichromate, make sure you remember what you're working out the number of moles of. 
So C times V, so it's 0 0.1 volume in the litres, 0 0.02. That means we've got 0 0.002 moles of dichromate. I'll take that number, stick it in there, 0 0.002. So to go from there to there, we need to multiply by 5. That gives us 0 0.01 moles of Fe2+. So the concentration of Fe2+, so number of moles divided by the volume, so 0 0.01 divided by the volume, it was 50 cubic centimetres, which is 0 0.05. So that equals 0 0.2 moles per litre. Okay. So five things you should be able to do. You should be able to identify oxidising and reducing agents given a redox equation. You should be able to identify strong oxidising reducing agents using the right chemical series where appropriate. You should be able to recall some everyday uses of strong oxidising agents. You should be able to construct ion electron equations when necessary. And you should be able to carry out redox titration calculations.